Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Joining us after a little hiatus, Professor James McCanny. Uh, Professor McCanny, your website is jmccsci.com, jmccsci.com. Uh, you're the expert and a primary teacher of the, uh, of the Plasma University, Electrical Universe Theory, uh, and there's a tons of evidence to prove it. Uh, we talked on the break. Uh, the primary thing, as you mentioned, is like an ocean of comets coming in. We're in basically a wave period where there's a lot of them. This is the NASA year of the comet, three of them. The next one coming in is called Comet Lemon. And the ISON one is the one that's most concerning that's going to pass in close to the sun in early November. Um, there was a paper you mentioned last time before the, the show today that was published in Israel that suggests if a, quote, comet struck the sun, it would cause a big coronal mass ejection. But according to your theory, it doesn't have to to hit the sun. It just has to pass close enough to cause a discharge. Um, the comet theory of extinction-level events is a big deal because it's far more likely than an impact, isn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. And NASA has always concentrated on, well, it's got to hit. And, you know, the, the biggest events in history, nothing hit at all. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the issue is that um, if you only talk about things that hit, then you can also say, oh, they're little. And so, uh, and, and also there's something that I've learned and that the, the NASA models for so-called extinction level events from direct hits are way, way overestimated. And the reason is because the Earth is very pliable. On a large scale, it's like a big ball of sand. And so when something hits, most of that energy is absorbed very locally. Uh, there were studies done on that, uh, uh, the Chilub, it's called a crater off of Yucatan. And what they discovered is they actually studied the dinosaur before and after that crater was made from whatever created it. And they said that not a single dinosaur species went extinct before and after that event. Uh, in that area, let alone the rest of the world. So that was not the cause of the dinosaur extinction. Um, and if you, the other thing is when you look at extinction events, it's not just something hit the earth. You're looking at mountain building. You're looking at ocean level changes. You're looking at um, or, um, uh, volcanic activity worldwide. You're talking about things that affect the entire world. And so these are only uh, can happen from something big passing by, and that's why uh, there's a lot greater chance of something big uh, passing near or what I call action at a distance. But they don't want to talk about that. And now just quickly going back to that article, uh, it was published a couple of weeks ago, uh, some author out of Israel publishing in one of the astrophysics journals, now suggesting that an ice ball can hit the sun and cause a major electromagnetic wave that can take out our electric grid system, which is absurd. I mean, the physics here, where is it? Um, their model of the sun is that the nuclear reaction of the sun is at the core. So how is an ice ball hitting the upper atmosphere of the sun going to cause shock waves down to the core, which are going to send electromagnetic waves out to us and kill us? You know, it's yeah. so absurd, but see, they got to have something on the books to try and take away my thunder, which I've been saying all along, showing that right. comets, that we have thousands of examples of comets coming near the sun, snap, you see that spark plug electrical discharge, and boom, out comes the big flare. But they can't have that action at a distance. They won't touch it. So here they got some guy that they get some pawn that they can stick up there, publish an article, put it in an astrophysics journal, and say that now they can claim, and this is after decades of denial, that there could be no effect from comets on the sun. So you can see they're getting ready. They are getting ready. And, of course, uh, the, the comet that's going to come near the sun is Comet Ison, which is another anomaly. They say that the nucleus is like, uh, I've seen estimates from 5 kilometers to 25, which is really pretty small. Yet they're saying that this, they're already predicting that after it goes through the solar atmosphere, it will become the biggest comet in history. <laughs> well, based on what? You know, clearly they're lying. Now, you made estimates that the comet may be as large as uh, 2,600 kilometers. 
across uh, the Kern yeah. line. Yeah, there's so many strange things about that comet. They they announced it through the ISON uh, Institute in Russia, the same institute that announced Comet Elenin, by the way, and, and all of that hoopla, but the uh, which was total false information. But the uh, this comet they announced September 21st, 2012, which is the, the fall equinox. And I thought, what a strange date to announce this. But clearly they had to make an announcement because some amateur was going to discover this comet. So they made the announcement so they could control the information. But I feel they've been watching this baby for 10 years. You know, and you were just talking about comets coming into the solar system. So that means that they would have known the size of this nucleus, a lot of the properties of the nucleus. They know I'm right about the plasma discharge comet model. And so the, the end result is, they had gone through all of the predictions of this coming around the sun and, and then becoming a big comet. Well, how's, how's a little five-mile-across snowball supposed to become the biggest comet in history? It's not coming close to us, 37 million miles away. <laughs> None of what they're saying adds up. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense at all. So clearly yeah. NASA is doing damage control here eight months right, before. The- the, the interesting thing is that uh, what they're doing too is they're trying to spin it because they want they what I think is they suspect this could be potentially an extinction level event, and I think they're terrified that they're not going to maintain control of things are going to fly apart, which is part of the reason why I want to connect it to the Homeland Security Department DHS. Uh, we're going to have actually a, a former Marine MP on. Um, we'll just use his, his first name, Jay. He's actually going to be in studio with me. And Jay's going to ask some questions because I think the link is a lot of the behavior of the international banks, including the announcement I made in the first hour, that the Canadian banks have now announced they're going to do similar control of bank funds as uh, Cyprus. I don't know if they're going to be as serious, but apparently they're announced in the public media. The uh, buy of millions upon tens of hundreds of millions of bullets, especially the hull point bullets, suggests that we have a government out of control. You know, when you're buying tens of thousands of armored personnel carriers and tanks, when you're bringing foreign troops on American soil and training them, down in Mexico, by the way, they're training with Mex- with uh, Chinese and United Nations troops uh, on, quote, rescue missions into America, which is basically an invasion with American troops and training. Uh, we know there's something very weird uh, planned. And mm-hmm. I believe that the globalists expect some kind of extinction-level event, and they want to do whatever they're going to do before that event happens because they're afraid that they're going to lose control if they lose their power grid and their satellite communications. That's what my suspicion oh, is. Oh, yeah, I, I think uh, exactly uh, you're right on. And uh, one thing I've always said, I've kind of analyzed this, and, okay, they're going to bring in a foreign army to control this country, but any any guy that's a leader that has half a brain would know that that army can then turn on them and take over. And so those people are going to come in here with a virus, and they're only going to be here for a week or two, and then they're all going to die. You see what I'm saying? And then how do you supply this, you know, two, three million man army, this wave that comes in? You, there's no way in this big country to supply it. You know, a little country like Germany or France, Maybe you could possibly yeah. supply them. But in this country, I mean, you're not going to get supplies to central New York City, buddy. You know, so the only... Yeah, you're not, it's not going to happen, yeah. The, the troops will die basically like a... It's like a dying on the vine. Uh, the yeah. same, and also the Americans are... You know, we're, you're dealing with the people that have already been bred, uh, filtered out, and we are the... Um, how can I say it? The most unlikely to be dominated people on the planet. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I think so. so uh, they're they're picking a fight with the wrong people is what they're doing. is They, they think they're going to get away with this. They're crazy. But I think that they know something bad is coming. And I think yep. your scientific theories explain some hard endpoints that they're working against. Oh, absolutely. Welcome back. And um, <clears throat> I want to connect a few dots here. And we're going to have uh, joining us Jay, one of the uh, four Marine MPs and an expert with all his buddies in the military on uh, DHS and their actions. What I'd like to do is a doctor who has worked as a civilian on contract with government agencies working on highly classified projects, working with Delta Force, uh, working with uh, the Federal Center in Denver, working on Operation Top Off and Dark Winter, U.S. Space Command, Strategic Defense, Star Wars, 
not working on the projects, but talking to all the people there. And because I have a close to photographic memory and advanced training in technological uh, areas, <clears throat> I absorbed all this stuff like a sponge. And I cross-correlated over all the many years now, but on this radio network show, and previously I did one on Clear Channel back in Denver before I even uh, closed my practice. It was actually called Laughter is the Best Medicine. But once in a while we'd foray into these kind of areas. And what I'm saying is that we have the brilliant Professor McCanny giving us a clear idea that there's some endpoints in terms of galactic and solar weather, especially comets. And we have the danger of a civilization-ending event uh, that uh, could happen. And we have a government, like just today, again, in the Washington Times, UN passed a sweeping international arms regulation viewed by some as Second Amendment override. What the heck do they think they're doing? To uh, to grab people's Second Amendment rights, um, and um, just pop those on there. There you go. To grab people's Second Amendment rights, what do they think they're doing? Jay's arrived a couple minutes early, uh, and how does it tie in with uh, what you think? Because Professor McKenna, you've done some very neat series on History Channel Two recently, dealing with space weather, dealing with comets. What's your thesis? Does anything I'm saying make some sense in terms of what? The government's doing what DHS, which Obama's doing. I mean, this uh, is really hard for people to grasp, but it really is happening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've always said that when you start to see the real end game, the banks closing in, uh, taking personal resources, which is really the the end game. <clears throat> yeah, well, Canada uh, just announced this morning they're going to do similar controls of people access to the bank accounts today. The United Nations just passes a sweeping international arms treaty, and Obama says he's going to sign it this week and will approve it, whether or not the Senate approves the bill or not, which is basically constitutional law. That alone should, should impeach Obama, but he seems to be bulletproof. Nobody's impeaching the maniac, and we have a government now that's passing laws in Connecticut that virtually any kind of gun that gun takes a clip. I talked to um, Larry Pratt of Gun Owners of America, who'll be on next week, and the government are on a jihad. That's the words they actually news media are saying. Obama's on the jihad, and of course because he's a Muslim, to take away people's guns. And I, and I can tell you, it seems like they want to inflame the situation to cause a civil war. They're just oh, exactly. drooling for it yeah. because, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 I mean, I'm not exaggerating here. When I see the banks grabbing up to 60% to 100% of people's money in Cyprus, and then there's a, a list of 147 names of people that got advanced notes and pulled their money out years before, months before. This situation means anybody that's a depositor in the Western world, <clears throat> whether in Europe or Canada or the United States, Australia, New Zealand, anywhere, is no longer safe from international banking. And if they're going to try to grab the guns, it means whatever they're planning on doing is so horrendous with the collapse of our food supply. We had the worst drought in American history except for the, the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. We have collapse of food supplies and crops literally virtually everywhere on the planet. And people don't grasp that we're in the middle of a currency war, a food crisis, a galactic and space weather is way out of control. The weather is up and down like a yo-yo. All the seasons are mixed up, which is not good for growing food. And we have a government that says, well, we want to disarm you because of the kids in Newton, Connecticut, when in fact having more guns and having armed guards in school will make them safer. But instead they want to disarm citizens when a criminal can always get a gun, even a mentally ill person. In fact, one of the things I mentioned is if we had a registry to protect us citizens so that we could truly report people who are, quote, mentally ill and have a way of people finding out if they're on a list and getting removed. Uh, but the problem is the government doesn't want to give up the idea of a federal gun registry. They want to subvert the authority of the sheriff. They want to subvert the ability of citizens to arm themselves with whatever they damn well please. And when a military person is discharged with a fully automatic or semi-automatic weapon, uh, it's nobody's business to try to say because they have lost a limb or they have a temporary uh, depression because they're adjusting, that now they're no longer capable of handling a weapon, especially training someone else in it. I think this is a sign that the government is no longer our government, that we are dealing with a civilization that literally is on the verge of collapse, and the globalists and the people that run it, which are primarily bankers, know there's an extinction-level event coming, and they're doing everything in their power to maintain control before the disaster strikes. Yeah, they, what I've always said is it'll be a natural disaster of basically of cosmic scale 
And yeah. then you see all of these other events, because they've been preparing for years, decades. Oh, yeah, they've known about it for decades. In fact, when we read back to Pioneer 10, Jay, I want you to ask a couple of questions of Professor McCanny. He's an expert on on uh, some of the solar things. Uh, tell us what you've researched and found on the DHS. What, what have you found, Jay? Well, just so far that uh, with the, the stockpiling of the ammunition, um, it's it's incredible. I mean, it, not just the fact that there that there's so much. And uh, one article I was reading last night, they even talked about it's it's the 1.6 billion, and then you turn around and they're buying they're buying 10 million rounds of uh, hollow points for 40 caliber pistols. Uh, yeah. What about all the armed personnel carriers and tanks? Yeah. And we're talking about tens of thousands of these. Well, uh, the current number is 2,700. But um, that's in just one buy. Apparently, there's some other ones that are up for contracts that are going to be oh. to adding up <laughs> even more. Before you know it, we'll be over 10,000 of these. What are they planning on doing? I mean, I, they, I you know, it's not a movie set. It's yeah, and 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 something something like that would be. I mean, in 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 because the, the the seven the seven uh, the seven different governmental agencies that are under the DHS umbrella are all. All their authorities within the United States. We're not talking about downtown Baghdad or Baghdad or Fallujah. We're talking about about downtown L.A. Yeah, exactly. And this, and this is this this would be like you know, one of us trying to butt heads with an NFL lineman with, with one of these vehicles. I mean, they're they're just gonna they're just roll over anything that gets in their way, and and you can't stop them. They're already they're already from the ten years of experience they've had in the Middle East. Uh, they're 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 designed to to resist and and at least be survivable for the people inside. To anything we could pretty much throw at them. Yeah, I mean, I golly, there's, a, there's some novel things you can do. One of the things that got mentioned to me earlier by Walter Burian uh, from some of his friends and who are in the know in this and various agencies, you make a Molotov with tar, uh, one third tar for the uh, with the. Gasoline, the tar will stick, and it'll. Well, yeah, it's more like a uh, more it's like a tar a, bomb, and it'll um, basically create a smoke. like napalm. Yeah, it'll create basically a uh, cloud of smoke around it, and also get in the air and take vent. So anybody inside eventually will get cooked with uh, with hot smoke. Yeah. Uh, so there's ways of doing <laughs> things. There's also ways of armor yeah. piercing. Uh, Things like my ball bearing accelerator weapon, which is ten times harder than a bullet, will go right through the side <laughs> of an APC like it's butter. I'll order two. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, as much as they may think that they can get around this, uh, yeah. there's always clever Americans who will figure ways of of uh, basing just the cost. Of, the cost of stopping is what's going Yeah, and the cost in terms of lives, etc. Exactly. But obviously, the fact I mean. that they're contemplating it, spending money that they don't have on it, indicates how crazy and how desperate they are. Welcome back, and uh, Jay. Uh, um, you have some questions with uh, Professor McKinney. Professor McKinney, you've done some recent research, uh, and there's a number of candidate things that are going to happen in the next few years. If uh, We're trying to connect a few dots. That's why we have you and the expertise in the space weather. But uh, you mentioned on the break something very profound, which is something I think that uh, need to, we need to focus on. Whatever the globalists are going to do, they're going to do in advance of any kind of event by months or years because they don't want to run the danger that they're going to lose the power grid their communication satellite network, which, of course, people don't realize that, for example, the Iridium satellite network is primarily a military communication satellite network, which not only is used by us, but the communist Chinese and other foreign troops. And they're co-training with them, but with their, without their communications, without the power grid, they might try to create a false flag, as you said, on a break, and uh, selectively have parts open to them so they can maintain some degree of control and communications, but they can't risk losing the power grid or losing satellite communications because it would immobilize them and make them incapable of taking over a town, city, or any place. In fact, it would, the country and the world would degrade to about 2,000 plus uh, city states run by a local boss, uh, right. run either by a civilian militia or by gangs or an amalgamation of both. Because right. I just so they, do not see so the, the government trying to do this during a disaster. I think they're going to try to do it before one that's a hard point. And so your science and some of these issues of when cometary activity could interact with the sun is essential because it will tell us when some hard points where these people, they're obviously in a panic to grab right. people's guns that are going to pass these treaties. They're obviously in a panic that they're going to pass laws in Canada, which is, to be honest with you, probably one of the most stable economies on the planet. The idea that they're going to pass a law to restrict access to your money in Canada today, uh, that was announced, 
that tells me something really, really awful is about to happen very soon. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and and uh, the point is that they have to create a, basically what we would call a false flag solar event. I, I started noticing this about a year and a half ago. NASA kept pumping up the idea that we're going to have this amazing solar flare that's going to take out Earth. And, of course, that's an absolute possibility. But they were doing it, uh, for example, spaceweather.com. Every day has these announcements of amazing auroral activity. But all of it's up at the North Pole. It's like Norway and Alaska where you, every day so, there's so, a, so, so they're basically amplifying non-information that basically is no basis of scientific fact or any real threat at a time when you, it, it's, it, there's a, a cognitive disjunction with reality. It's like, why are they hyping this? Well, it's yeah. not the issue. They're not even focusing on ISON or the Lemon Comet coming in soon. They're not talking about these real events. Instead, they're talking about things that have no relevance to reality, and it's obviously they're trying to massage the public to accept something that's a lie. Right, and, and what is that building up? That an event which, uh, like I liken it to the Japanese earthquake, which I think was about a five. The tsunami was, from my point of view, created by explosions down in the trench offshore by nuclear bombs. Yeah, in fact, there was a, a missing P wave there. I heard from my sources that there were a number of other, uh, if you want to call it factors, that indicated it was a normal subduction fault line shift, that the uh, tsunami that struck Sendai, Japan, was artificially created. It wasn't a normal of subduction event. Uh, and it fits in with uh, some of my other contacts that have said there were some threats back and forth that the Japanese indicated that before one of the threats, they were told, if you don't succumb, we're going to put an earthquake across one of your reactors. And this is about four years ago. They actually did it. They actually put an earthquake and caused a massive evacuation in uh, in, uh, in the southern Japan. Uh, across one of the reactors, the fault line literally created a crack right through the reactor uh, vessel, and they evacuated a couple hundred thousand people from the area. I think it was down near, uh, was it Osaka? Uh, and uh, the Japanese government warned in advance, if you don't do this, we're going to create an earthquake and hit you. So our government can do earthquakes, can cause volcanoes, can cause even with things like nukes or harp activity, and uh, the people behind them are the international bankers. They're the ones pulling the strings, and uh, they're running scared right now. Uh, they're yeah, basically they're ready to, to actually start seizing people's property right out of their bank accounts because the big event is coming. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, when people are desperate, they do desperate things. And that's the, right. You know, and, and the bankers are cornered now because the, their gig is up. People know who they are, what's going on. And, and they're not they're not faring well. Plus, they're arguing amongst themselves. Oh, they're not even of one mind. We have hundreds of these international top level bankers have quit in the last uh, eighteen months, and uh, they're all running like lemmings jumping off a ship, or I call them Norwegian uh, sea rats jumping off a pirate ship as it's about to sink. It's just uh, disgusting. And uh, when you have stable economies like Canada that have giant resources, a stable banking system, and don't have a high debt load. What the hell are they doing talking about restricting access to people's money? Yeah, I mean, no, it's, uh, uh, it's absurd. That's you a know, big red flag, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's, a, it's so beyond absurd. It has, but it, these are the indications, like I said. So you start seeing natural events coupled with international politics, banking, restriction right. of people's money, gun control laws being uh, pushed through that you know, uh, make absolutely no sense. And then the wave of shooting... Well, yeah. Yeah, the wave of shootings that you know are all artificial. You know that this guy, Adam Lanza, his father was involved with the LIBOR scandal, which is international banking manipulation in London with the uh, London uh, exchange of money. I mean, uh, there's some really evil things. In li and by the way, Adam Lanza had a satanic altar in his home. Uh, the kid was, you know, blatantly crazy, but no one put him in a psychiatric facility. Then we see the abnormal caliber of the weapons that killed a lot of the children. Uh, that, that were there wasn't the weapon he had had the right caliber but it was in his trunk and there were two people who were picked up at the scene but they were released later in camo that basically uh, they didn't account for the fact that the guns that he carried that supposedly caused the murders weren't even the right caliber for the forensics of the bullets that killed the children in, in uh, Newton, Connecticut so it goes on and on then we have this wind up toy in, in uh, Colorado and it turns out he was involved with a mind control research project and working on his uh, on his graduate degree. And uh, here he is uh, committing mass murder. And you can tell that this is a 
you know, a Manchurian candidate, uh, you know, basically killer. You yep. want to call cybernetic warrior. He's been wound up to go and do these events, and uh, he's out of it. You know, just look at the man. You can say, this is not a sane person. This is not even a complete person. There's something really horrible that happened to him. Yeah, that's why they, the pictures they released weren't taken for days afterwards because he was so out of it. I mean, they, they couldn't take a picture of it. And, and by the way, it turns out his doctors were directly involved with mind control projects. His doctors yeah. are mind control experts for the government. So yeah, it was like, they, excuse yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and no intention at all. The psychiatrist had him on all these drugs. And, and uh, the, the acquisition of weapons that he managed to get beforehand you know, and, the, and where did he get all this budget? I mean, don't tell me you got it on student loans. I mean, he spent yeah. the equivalent around forty thousand dollars in advanced weapons. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that doesn't that doesn't compute. I don't. I don't. That's total BS. I mean, uh, you're, I need a student loan because I want to arm myself and commit mass murder. Uh, okay. You know, Bill, I want to I want to direct this towards. Uh, now, given that this is happening, I want to give some people an advice on what to do. Right, let's, let's, let's get to that next, and we'll get some questions from Jay next after that. Yeah, yeah, Jay, and, and I, I want you to contribute on this, too. And my advice to people is to get out of the way. You have right. to get out of the way. You can't confront, you know, people are armed, and what you need those arms for is if you're in a corner and somebody's walking through the door, yeah, you unload. And, and that's the point-to-point -point range. That's why the U.S. Army and Navy did not attack Japan. Because every man, woman, and child had a handgun. They didn't have an automatic weapon. They had a handgun. And, and so every hole, every door they walk through, there's going to be somebody popping a, a, a shell into somebody. You right. know, they would have lost a million men attacking Tokyo. So that's why they right. decided to drop the bombs. But the same thing is true. You use your weapon at point-blank range when somebody's coming through the door at you. You don't Which is why my favorite weapon is a shotgun, is, the, yeah, is number one. Yeah. If you want to clear uh, trenches, if you want to keep your home safe, you're not going to blow your aim. you got a shotgun at uh, 10 to 20 yards, man. Uh, yep. You're not going to have an enemy standing in front of you. They're going to be in pieces. Yep. No, and, no and more you do this. Yeah, and uh, you do this, uh, you get out of the way. You have to yeah. get out of the way. Back in a moment. So, Jay, uh, the scenario, the, you know, I'm, I really see 2013 as a turning point. I think uh, Obama is, has made a number of what I call excessive moves you know, since he's stolen this election. We know there's a combination of voter fraud that's been obvious. When you have 140% of a voter list actually votes for him, or in some places 100% of the people vote for him, or there's no votes for Romney at all, or we have literally votes that literally are people that were certified dead for decades that vote for Obama. We know that there is voter fraud. And then number two, they have these uh, ACORN, which is a criminal organization. And then on top of that, we have Obama using millions of taxpayer dollars to hire psychologists to actually manipulate the public to believe the lies. Because everything he says that comes out of his mouth, how do you know Obama's lying? Because air is moving over his vocal cords. It is mind boggling and he uses neuro linguistic programming, he uses cadence, he they have all these people still worshipping the maniac when he's doing everything to violate the constitution, although he's supposedly a constitutional expert, he's a ghost man. We can't find any records of where he went to school, where he wasn't where he supposedly Columbia, how he got in there as a foreign student and all of a sudden he's now an American. I mean, we, we, we can't get anything moving forward, whether it's uh you know, Doctor uh uh you know, Ordy Tate's or um, uh, Attorney Michael Connolly with the new IDs that shows it's clearly it was from his birth records. He was born in Kenya. His father was probably Frank Marshall Davis, the communist. And you look at all of the people he's been mentored under. This guy is a Manchurian candidate. And on top of that, the bankers are managing him like George Soros supported, and I call the $2 billion man, that's with Obama, from George Soros and the global bankers. They have every intention of trashing this nation. We could be energy independent. American citizens should have access, and I believe that the only people that shouldn't have guns are people that are clearly mentally ill. <clears throat> Anybody else should be able to have access to any gun, automatic and otherwise. And uh, people need to have independent protection. They need also harden the power grid. We don't see any ex activity. Congress was blocked by Lisa Markowski, the rhino senator from Alaska, uh, four years ago. I mean, it goes on and on. 
that our nation should not be exporting our business, we should not be exporting our technology, we should not be inviting into NASA thousands of Chinese scientists. I mean, it goes on and on. We're literally arming to the teeth with technology and information our enemies, and we're even tolerating cybernetic attacks on our power grid by China through the Tianjin Blue Army. I don't understand why the American public doesn't wake up when they're being kicked in the head. Well, uh, I think there is, it's, a, it's a slow, progressive dulling, uh, dulling of the American uh, no, Not public. slow anymore, though. I think that they, it's like when you get a, a slap every three or four months, you kind of, oh, okay, I got a slap in the hallway. You're walking around school. When you get ten punches in the head in four seconds, that's a fight. I believe that they've amped the ante now to the point where Obama's trying to sign this peace, this, this uh, small arms treaty, and he's on literally the news is saying a jihad to get our guns. But we know that when they start seizing money in Cyprus, it's a sign by the bankers of we're not going to take 9% or 7%. We're going to take it all. Yeah. When they say that they're going to announce they're going to do things in restricting bank access to your money in Canada, this tells me that they're going to make sure they have international banking rules so that Americans or people who might have money elsewhere better not because they're going to they're going to use cybernetic techniques to track it they have a thing called FinCEN F I N S E N to track your money anywhere on the planet and the globalist maniacs want access to everything from your pension funds to everything no. um, uh, what, so what would you say is advice to people uh, professor McKinney what questions do you have Jay in terms of uh, where this is going because you talked to a lot of your army buddies marines are local what are they saying? Well, they 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 don't know. They don't know. It's it's it's. Uh, I mean, the joke about people being preppers. But what professor would you say would be a a, a good series of preparations to make? What do you think? Well, we got a prepper list there called the Ten Plus list. It's on the front page of my site. Okay. Helped by by John Moore, who's former special forces from Vietnam. He's a forensic investigator, and we built it up over the last four years. So if you look at that list, it helps. I tell people that they need to build up not only conventional but unconventional weapons. They should definitely have either aquaponics, a food storage system, a roof water storage system. They should get a well if they can get a well. They should prepare to tell their neighbors to start prepping at the very least, you know, several months of food. They need to be prepared to have an, enough of extra weapons they can give them, whether it's shotguns or 30 caliber, et cetera, because when society breaks down, it's something as simple as a power outage. And I know because I worked with the federal center and the government in Colorado, and they told me within 4 to 11 days that gangs or civilian militia will run every city and every town in the country. And that's a fact. I mean, it's either going to be gangs or militia. And by the way, the military isn't going to be there. Even if they brought in foreign troops, it's like dropping a drop of water into a sea. America is a big country. It's like 3.5 million square miles. If you think you could take a foreign army in here and take over America, it's just stupid. You might do a show play and take over Los Angeles temporarily, but are you going to have the supply lines to maintain those troops and bullets and everything? I don't think so. I think this is a, a basically a made-for-TV movie, and they expect to use fear to scare us. When, to be honest with you, I'm mad enough, there's no fear left in me. Yeah, there's, no, there's, you're absolutely right. What I tell people is you got to stay out of the way. So that means don't go anyplace. Don't go across town to save Aunt Molly. Tell Aunt Molly she's got to get her act and get there, you know, when things happen. Or yeah, I have know, advanced ways of uh, communicating, whether it's ham radio or yeah. uh, walkie-talkies. Could, have have, have right, convergence points because the, they're going to shut down the cell networks and the power grid. And I was told this by FEMA because I saw their classified manual back in the mid-'90s. The very first thing, no matter what disaster, if it's a bioweapon release in downtown Atlanta and two people are killed or a radiological dirty bomb from medical waste in Denver or, or Chicago, they're going to shut the grid for the country. They're going to shut down the cell network. And, of course, all the road signs and all the off-ramps and everything that's electronic will no longer work. All the gas tanks and all the pumps that pump gasoline are dependent on electricity, they're going to shut them off. That's the very first thing. Before they literally dot that I or cross that T or get another cup of coffee at Starbucks for the cops or the troops, they're going to turn off the power grid. Yeah, so you got to be prepared at minimum 14 days to stay where you are. Don't Hunker. move. Hunker now. Don't, okay. don't yeah. make the mistake of going out and getting Aunt Molly. You know how many people are going to make that mistake? A lot, yeah. I tell people two weeks hunker down, two weeks to stay in place with your neighbors and protect your area. And then after that, if the disaster lasts longer than two months, 
you got to get out of Dodge. And by that point, everybody is either starved to death, died of disease, or been eaten. Believe it or not, people think that cannibalism won't happen. Uh, And at that point, people need to be able to know where they can collectively go for a secure place that's at least one gas tank away from a major population center. And if you don't believe that that could happen, these movies are all proliferated in the last 15, 20 years, have little pieces here and there, but they're predictably programming, telling you, just like this World War Z movie they're trying to tell us, the enemy is not the zombies. It's the American prepper, the gun-toting veteran, the Marine, the person who's come back from the Army that has skill sets, that with a dinner fork and knife can take over a building. They don't want these people around, even if they had their legs blown off, of being able to operate guns and tell people how to use them. They don't want them to know skill sets to protect themselves from something simple as a broom or, or a, you know, a baseball bat or a kitchen knife and some duct tape. They don't want them to know any of these skill sets because if they did, it would be much harder, as Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, to, to literally bring in tyranny. Because what they're planning on doing is so tyrannical, they absolutely want to disarm the public before they do it. Yeah, and the, the shutting down the electric grid is key. That's why people have to literally do this as a practice technique. They have to shut off the electricity, shut off the water, and, and just do it for a weekend. Just do it for a weekend, and then you're going to realize, okay, now let's extend this to two weeks. Let's extend it to two months. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. yeah. And that, that's why when we had that thing on September 8, 2011, it was supposedly somebody getting a few keystrokes in Yuma, Arizona, that was uh, upwind of a, of a power-generating plant from nuclear reactor that was feeding power to California. And that created a tsunami that knocked out everything, even caused a hot shutdown of San Onofre, blew two storm turbines at $1.2 billion cost because of bad engineering design from Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and caused a massive radiation surge to five times background radiation for four days on my radiation detector sitting in my wife's dresser. If people don't think this is real... This is not a B-movie. This is not a rehearsal. We're telling you desperately, get yourself prepped up. Get yourself ready. When you're talking about banking controls in Canada, our next-door neighbor, when we have the fool in the White House printing money like a printing press and he's hosing it down with Ben Bernanke, when we have war brewing in the Middle East, when we have our ships and our uh, battlefield uh, missile destroyers sitting off of the North Korean coast and B-2 bombers, things are not looking up not. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to release an airborne plague next because they know they can't take it straight on. It has to be a lateral attack. An airborne plague is on the menu. Top of the satanic menu. Closing comments, Jay. Stay tuned. Keep listening. 